What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk. Today is Friday, April 19th, 2019. Um, put a pause on these videos for a little while as I was doing another video series with futures trading. But we're back here, uh, back with these video breakdowns. Anybody new to these videos, basically what I do is every week I recap the Forex markets. I go over all the most uh, important and impactful events that happened this past week. I go over the technical analysis of the charts. I dive into all the price action we've been seeing. I go into a dive of next week, what to look out for on the charts, what holidays there are, what main events to be looking out for different currencies, and I'll go on a full breakdown of what I'm watching trade-wise going into next week and what setups we have looking for. All right, all my returning viewers, thank you guys. I love your support. I've been getting a lot of messages asking where these videos have been. I'm sorry for the pause, but they're back. Here we are. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and dive into these charts, dive into the news, dive into what's going on around the world, see what we have cooking, and see what's going on next week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. If you like these videos, please subscribe to the page, turn on your notification, so every time I drop one of these videos, you're notified. Throw a comment below if you like it, if you love it, if you hate it. Either way, give me some feedback, give me some opinions, anything else you want me to check out. If you want me to check out any pairs in particular, I can... You can shoot me an email, Corey at CoreFXTrading.com. I'll send you some breakdown or any recommendations moving forward. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it, and let's get started. All right, guys. So as you can see, I have the weekly performance pulled up here. This is the first thing I like going over every week with you guys. And basically what we're seeing here is the overall relative performance of each individual currency over the last week's data. And it's mainly pegged up against the U.S. dollar. That's why you'll never see a percentage high or down in the US dollar, it's always just flat. That's because this is the main peg that these are all compared against, right? So if the dollar's in the far left, it's outperforming. If it's to the right, it's underperforming, right? So it's outperforming. We had the dollar and the yen strong this week. Uh, a lot of that's linked to uh, safe haven. You know, people worried continuing to buy these um, low risk assets like the dollar and the yen. And then you had poor data sending these pairs lower. Um, and then again, you know, the U.S. dollar outperformed most of these pairs, so they're all going to be in the red. But this is the main two to worry about. Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar, worst performers. Japanese yen, U.S. dollars, best performers. Had some strong data in the U.S. as well. This is our weekly news coming from Forex Factory. This is where we go to to figure out what's going on in the market, see what events to watch for, all that good stuff. Um, as you can see here, started Monday. Business Outlook Survey out of Canada and Monetary Policy Meeting Minutes were the major events. Not too much going on there. I'll just recap briefly the most important things that happened this week. We had, you know, at expectation, um, pound unemployment report, so nothing crazy there. This is what sent the New Zealand dollar falling lower. Their inflation numbers missed expectations. Their CPI report, Consumer Price Index, um, sending it lower. The Chinese economy's GDP um, beat expectations. So that's a good sign for overall risk sentiment globally. Even though we didn't see much of a rally from it, that is a great sign. And their industrial production was much higher than anticipated. So strong numbers out of China, one of the superpowers of the world, shows us good signs moving forward for economic stability. CPI missed in the pound. Another CPI data, another inflation number. <clears throat> like with the um, New Zealand economy, the pounds missed expectations. That hurt the pound as well. CPI, as expected from Canada with a beat trade balance, um, moved into a very strong jobs report out of Australia. We had a nice employment report. They stayed at 5% unemployment rate and created 25,000 jobs last month as opposed to 15,000. Big jump. Mixed PMI out of Europe, more so negative than positive. Um, could have been you know, the factor setting the euro lower. Nice strong retail sales out of the pound. Kind of balanced out that miss we had. Um, Canada strong retail sales, U.S. dollar retail sales strong. So this is this is good news, right? We had a pretty good week as far as fundamentals go. A lot to look forward to uh, moving forward, and a lot going on. We have a lot of holidays coming up. You know, this week we have Easter, so we've got a uh, bank holiday all over the place. Good Friday bank holiday today, um, all across the world. Moves us into next week where we have. More holidays continue. Sunday, Monday, we have Easter across New Zealand, Australia, Europe. And then we've got uh, European and Australian bank holiday on Wednesday and then an Italian holiday Thursday. As far as news goes, though, we got a pretty good amount of news. Tuesday, we have uh, Sunday, Monday, I recommend not trading, guys. It's going to be slow bank holidays. Um, 
The U.S. is going to be open, but it's going to be slow. Like today's Good Friday, and the markets have been really slow with the U.S. bank holiday. This is going to be a bank holiday over in Europe, so the markets are going to be slow, right? We've got Tuesday kicks off the week really with news with CPI data out of Australia, big mover for the Australian dollar. Followed by Wednesday, we have the um, Bank of Canada, their rate statement, massive you know, central bank meeting. This is the biggest news events we can have in Forex, so it's massive for the, for the Canadian dollar. That takes us into the um, Bank of Japan's outlook report and monetary policy statement, followed by their press conference by Kuroda. Uh, another pretty big mover. Japanese one's not typically the biggest event, um, but something definitely to watch out for. We have durable goods from the U.S. Um, Thursday, trade balance out of Australia. I mean, New Zealand, sorry. And then we have advanced GDP out of the U.S. on Friday. That's going to be the biggest U.S. event of the week. And that's what we want to be looking out for. But this is the week, guys. This recaps what's going on fundamentally, what to look out for. I'm going to go ahead now and dive into our charts. Alrighty guys, so starting off here, we like to go over all the US dollar crosses. These are the most heavily traded pair, pairs of currencies, um, really that there are, mainly being the Euro US dollar. This makes up about 60% of the trading volume in Forex. So these are what we want to focus our attention on, see what's going on, break down for you guys, and then I'll dive into some pairs that I have on my watch list. Starting with the Euro, uh, we've been following this descending trend channel, right? Respecting the upper bounds, respecting the lower bounds, and kind of just bouncing between the two, slowly falling lower. We've had pretty, pretty jagged and strong pushes, right? We typically see markets move with impulses, then we have stagnation, then we have impulses, then we have stagnation, right? Um, this market's pretty much just been impulse after impulse after impulse after impulse, right? We've just been jaggedly chopping around. More recently, though, we have slowed down with the jagged moves, and we have really established a range in this area. So between the uh, 112 support and 113 resistance, it hasn't been the craziest range. We don't have a million touches to each one, but this is the most recent price action that we can use. Price is trading below 13 and above 12, and we're kind of chopping between the two. We've hit 12 and shot up. We've hit 13 and shot down. Uh, we're right around the middle to bottom quad quadrant of this range, so we want to wait and see. Maybe you're a range trader. Maybe you trade major support and resistance levels and this weekly level down here. Maybe you want to buy it when we come a little bit closer and try to rally it back up to that next level of the range. Or maybe you are a trend follower. You want to wait for a breakout below this support to try to catch that next move lower. Maybe you want it to break out and retest. Maybe you want to you know, wait for a little bit of a pullback and then catch it lower. A number of different ways, but you can see here we've got price respecting the 50-day moving average as well as this 113 resistance. We have multiple wicks to the upside. We have, um, first we had this bearish engulfing, then we had this shooting star, now we have a massive wide range expanded bar bearish engulfing here. So we're in a downtrend, we're below the moving averages, setting lower lows, lower highs. Price action to me is to the downside, but there's nothing jumping out at us right now to make me wanna execute a trade here. Lower time frames, we don't really see much going on either. Maybe this you know, trend line break this short could have been a nice catch. Right, we could have played the break of this trend line. Sorry for that. Let's use a better tool here. Could have played the break of this trend line, break of this, you know, support and price action up here, this consolidation, and wrote it short. But right now, we just had a strong move. So, if anything, I think price is going to correct before continuing lower again. But ultimately, our target is down here at 112, and then we'll see what price does from there. Pound dollar has been closing in. We have been, you know, seeing some tightened price action in here as you guys can see with these highs coming down and these lows holding here we've got a bit of um, you know price closing in on a, a pattern here we've got support holding the roof closing down right we got a descending triangle um, not really in context too much of a trend we got a nice trend line that did break here right with this strong move here so to the downside would be where more of my bias is, but this could come and break this upper trend line and move higher. Either way, if this does continue, we had a nice bearish candle here. If this does continue lower, we could look for a nice play like that to catch a short to the downside off this pound dollar. Or if it breaks above, we could look for something like this to try catching a long to the upside. Either way, this is similar to the euro in a bit of a pattern, right, in a range. We want to wait to see what price does once we get out of this box area and where it's heading next. Right, so this is a waiting game for this pair as well. Checking to see what opportunities come. Dollar Swiss franc. As you guys can see, we've been in a nice strong uptrend right over the last few weeks, really half of March and all of April. 
Um, more recently this week, we had an explosive move to the higher. We saw Swiss franc was the worst performer of the week. U.S. dollar was the top. So that shows us um, this is going to be where some of the strongest moves were this week, pitting the two up against each other. This gray box I highlighted here is something I have my eyes on and I want you guys to watch as well. We have what is called mean reversion, right? Everything in trading technical analysis wise uh, moves in waves, right? We have impulses, we have corrections, we have impulses, we have corrections, whether it's up or down. And these corrections are normal and they're part of the market. And what that is, is price coming back down to normal prices, to average prices, right? If anything gets too overbought, eventually we run out of buyers and price sells back off until buyers want to come back into the market. If we're oversold and we're extended to the downside, price runs out of sellers, like you saw here, buyers come into the market, push price higher until possibly sellers want to come back in or the buyers then take control and price moves up. So right now we've had buyers in control. We've had buyers moving price significantly higher. And what's happening now, I think, is we're running out of buyers. I think some sellers are going to step in. You can see this gray box is showing how far we are from the moving averages, right? So price needs to move lower or sideways as the moving averages catch up because mean reversion is something that we see all the time reoccurring every time frame every pair every asset so we want to see this mean reversion so what i would suspect or recommend if you're looking to trade this i would wait for a correction right maybe move averages catch up a little bit more and then try to get in on the pullback try to get in here along with a stop down here target up here something like that right and try to catch the next leg of this trend to the upside because right now chasing this with a long is just crazy shorting it is going against a lot of momentum um, that's kind of tough. We are above now this one um, 1 1.010 weekly resistance level. That's what we could possibly look for our support to be found on. And we might just see price do this for a bit, right? And then maybe it breaks out. So that could be where you, you know, maybe you get long at the bottom of this range. Or maybe you get long once it breaks back above this high. Either way, another one here, I would wait for the right opportunity and the right setup. Dollar yen. This one, um, you know, you can see these major levels price has been respecting. I've highlighted and put the red dailies on. We can see this little um, minor trend line we've got here in white. And then we've got this major daily trend line here in red. Price is on resistance, right? Strong 112 resistance level price is at here. We set a higher high here. Pull back to set a higher low. Set another temporary higher high here. Maybe we're getting ready to set another higher low. Zooming in, you guys can see this is another pair that's really just been range bound. We'll take it down even one more time frame lower. And you can see on the hourly, we've just been range bound, right? We've got a support here. Sorry about that. We got a resistance up here. And price is trading between the two. So, again, we want to look for price to break out of this range. This is much tighter of a range and much more short term of a range. It's not as much of a range as we saw as we're seeing in these daily chart ranges, right? This is a small time frame range. But we want to, you know, wait till this range is violated to trade it. I see we're on very strong resistance. We set a higher high within an uptrend. I think a nice play would be going short once we break below support and maybe catch the ride down to the next major level. I wouldn't be looking to try to, you know, catch the top here of a trend. Now we're reversing. Look for a downtrend. Try to short it all the way down here to 110. That's crazy talk. I would just look for the next correction, right? The next uh, regular market move. So we had this strong impulse. We had a correction. Then we had a strong impulse. Now we want a correction or we just stall out and then continue higher. And you can either wait for longs to break above here, catch the trend continuation, wait for price to correct, then try to catch longs or play the counter trend move. Maybe you're playing this major resistance, catching shorts. So you got a nice tight stop up above the highs and try to catch that correction and pull back lower. But the Japanese yen is more on our radar for soon to be trade opportunities. <laughs> Dollar CAD's in a basing pattern. I called this out on my Instagram at core.fx. If you follow me, check me out. If not, um, at a breakdown on here of this, we're in a nice pennant pattern, right? Price is trading above the moving averages. We don't really have any clear trend, but we had this inverted head and shoulders we called out a couple weeks ago. Um, price broke out of the pattern beautifully, has now pulled back to retest the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern, and that's holding as support. So we have support again, support, support, support. Price is holding. I want to look for a break to the upside, break and close above this trend line. That's what we're seeing here. Now we have this resistance at 134. I want to see if price is able to break that. If it is, we have a nice opportunity for a long. And our initial profit potential is this gray box, right? So we can expect price to move up 
to the top of this gray box where the prior higher high was. And that's going to be our next major level for price to try to break through to try to catch that next move, right? That's going to be our next major level to the upside if we get a breakout. Or price could respect this resistance rollover and break out of the pattern of the downside. But either way, this is on our radar now. Broke out of the pattern. You can see the resistance level here that price is uh, trying to break. So breaking this would be a nice long opportunity for this dollar CAD pair here. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Price in a nice downtrend. Broke this strong trend line. Moving averages have crossed over the 20, crossed below the 50. Major moving average crossover. Set a lower low, stalled out for a little bit with a lower high, set another lower low. Strong, bearish, breaking close below this support at 67. And now we are moving to the downside, right? So what do we want to do now? We want to look for short opportunities to get in with the trend, but at better prices. We don't want to get in short after a strong move to the downside like this. We'd rather wait for price to come back up, give us a good opportunity, and then catch that move to the downside, right? So right now we are looking for short opportunities up in this level here. And waiting for price to come back to us before we look to pull the trigger but that's where we're looking with the new zealand dollar um us dollar looking for short opportunities just waiting for price to come to us aussie dollar as you guys can see not the greatest price action but we do have a bit of you know a channel um a bit of structure price is respecting we broke above this strong weekly trend line broke above this strong daily resistance the 20 crossed above the 50 we do have what looks to be more so than anything an uptrend, right? We have this new higher high set here. Within this channel, you could be looking for buying opportunities at the bottom of the channel to try to catch the next impulse higher. Um, but we did have, you know, price respected this resistance here more recently. We've got a bunch of indecision candles in here, spinning top and then a bearish engulfing here. Kind of uh, pushed the price action of all this consolidation to the downside. And now I would be looking more so to the downside. Look for long opportunities around the bottom of this range and try to catch that next push higher. But as you can see, price has been pretty choppy all through here. We don't have any clean, even though price is going bottom left to top right, we don't have any clean movement trend, right? We don't have any nice structured moves like we see in here. Push, consolidation, push, consolidation, push. This is more so just chopping around, right? We shoot higher, we fall off. We shoot higher, we fall off. We bounce around, we shoot higher, we fall off. So it's a lot of choppy price action, not the best pair right now to be trading, but that is what we'll be watching here for the Aussie dollar or US dollar. All right, so now moving into our watch list, this is some pairs I have on my radar for this week. This is what I have you know, prioritized to be looking for opportunities. This is something we've been sharing with our group here, with our signal room at CoreFX for my students. Um, we had a very nice consolidation range price was respecting for most of this year up until recently, we broke out. We broke out and have now stalled up above it. What we've been looking for since we broke out is for price to come back, find support on this zone, and then look for longs for the next push higher. So this could be our resistance here at 79, 80, just above it, 80, really $80 flat. Um, could be our resistance. We could be now looking for longs off of that. And that's where we wanna be finding them. I would like to see this range break, right? We've got nice strong support here that price has been respecting. Now, if we can break and close up above this range, we could potentially catch something like this up to this prior high with a nice opportunity, small risk to reward opportunity um, to try to move higher. But we are now in an uptrend, price set a new higher high, trading above the moving averages. Let me get this this big wicks thrown off the, the scale here. Let me get it out of here. There you go. So you guys can see here. Here's the range. We broke out, set a high, and now sold off a bit. Correcting down to here, I would like to see a you know daily candle close with maybe a small body like this, long wick like that, that we call a hammer candle. Would like to see that close here. That could be a good indicator, you know, that buyers have taken over control again. We could see possibly, you know, another bearish candle or two down here, and then we get a bullish engulfing showing us another sign. A different way of showing it, but supply and demand shifted, buyers are in control. So we're looking for longs. We're looking for longs down in this range at 79.50. We're not just looking, sending a pending, pending buy limit down here to just, as soon as price hits it, jump in long and yay, let's see if this works. Some people's strategies might be that way, and, and if it does, and it's tested and works, that's great. But I like using confirmation. I like not just throwing an order out there and, oh, I like 
getting long in this range, so I'm just going to buy it as soon as price hits it because we could have an extreme sell-off. We could have Australian fundamentals or Japanese fundamentals or something give us an extreme sell-off, and, and you know now we're getting entered and blown out right away. So I like to see confirmation. I like to see price bottom out. Buyers come into the market, show us they're here to stay, and we catch that next impulse higher. Power New Zealand, another nice trade setup I like. You guys can see we have an ascending triangle here. We've been in an uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. We've been stalling out now underneath this uh, 195 resistance here. And you can see it has been respected a lot of times in the past, right? And more recently now, we've got an even tighter range with this here. So we've got this um, ascending bottom, right? We're setting higher lows. And you can see we have this... Uh, Resistance holding here and we want to see a break of that resistance, right? So another one where we could play and maybe you're playing shorts off it, right? Maybe you're shorting off in here. The only thing is um, As you can see every time we've touched it the sell-off from it has gotten lower and lower and lower, right? So if you did want to sell this resistance You want to have a great target, right? This would be your most recent target That would be the most recent low so setting a stop up here getting in short around here that is your target I guess you could try to squeeze a two to one in there, but your ideal high probabilities trade setup here would be a break above here. You can either just trade the break above it, wait for it to pull back and retest, trade that long. Either way, looking for long opportunities in this range is what we're going to be doing with this pound New Zealand pair. All right, we're in an uptrend, we're a basing pattern, really strong resistance is holding. Once this breaks, there's going to be a strong push most likely, and that's what we want to be looking for. That's what we want to be trading and trying to identify. Australian dollar Swiss franc. Right. We had a nice strong push higher here with this strong um, price action. Now again, guys, moving averages are down here. Price action's up here. We want to see a little bit of a correction, a little bit of a mean reversion. Maybe we just stall out and base around. Maybe we sell off. But either way, we had a strong resistance here. This is where you could be looking for short opportunities off your resistance, right? So this is where we set the supply zone, the resistance level. We're hitting it now. We got a spinning top indecision candle here off the zone, followed by a bearish engulfing. You could go down to the lower time frames, look for an opportunity. We got a nice basing pattern here. Take it to the hourly. You got a real nice basing pattern, right? So you could either play this rectangle, wait for price to break and close below it, right? A little bit of a flag rectangle pattern. Uh, maybe you want to get in, you know, closer to the top here, so you can set your stops up top. Nice risk to reward. Ride that lower. All in all, I do think that a nice correction is due here, and this is a good opportunity for our major resistance level trades, right? So there's a little bit of a trend line we've got. We can be looking for price to break, or maybe use it as a target. But all in all, longs yes, but right now shorts. Right now I'm looking for shorts off this resistance. Catch that, you know, 50, 100 pip sell-off correction and then try to catch that next impulse wave higher with the trend. All right, guys, real quick now, jumping into the S&P 500, U.S. equity markets, we are continuing to trickle higher. Got a basing pattern here this past week, but we are still moving higher, approaching our all-time highs again up here at uh, 29.50. So we're looking for, you know, continued buying out of the U.S. equity markets, and we're going to see if this price action is able to continue higher break these highs and maybe even break above these all-time highs that would be huge and that is what we're watching for this week I, I think there's could be decent sell opportunities once we initially hit this but all in all I, i'm looking for a break of it and then oil as you guys know i've been trading a lot of oil lately that's what i've been spending a lot of time doing and trading and uh making videos and all on but here's our resistance level we are trading below right now at 64.50 ish a barrel right between 64 and 64.50 a barrel. Um, you can see we're in a nice range here. Taking it to the four hour, you can see this range better. Resistance held, resistance held, resistance held, resistance held, right? So another one, we're looking for a break of this range. We're looking for a break either way um, of this range box, but we want to see a breakout. That's our next move. I think oil is going to continue moving higher. Uh, once it breaks above here, we can, you know, throw some targets. Expect the price to hit here. Then we'll expect it to have some slowdown on this resistance level here. Right, all along the way, there's resistance levels. You can even expect to slow down there. Um, but right now, we are trading below a range, I mean, below resistance in a range, and we want to see that range break. So that's our next move we want to be looking for in oil is that breakout. All right, guys, so that covers everything I wanted to break down for you guys today. Thank you all for sticking tuned with the video. I really appreciate it. If you guys are looking to you know, learn more about trading, make sure you check out the website. 
Corey Smith here of CoreFX, and um, this this video this picture needs to be updated. It's not me. Um, my website just got rebuilt, but here is the 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 um, site. You got the full trading course here. If you guys want to get the full experience, it's a hundred dollars a month now. You get full access to the course as well as the signal room to get our trade alerts um, all throughout the week. As you guys can see, it's it's jam packed with forty lessons, over fifty hours of content, constantly adding new content. Um, Really, you get to see everything that's covered in the course here on the website, corefxtrading.com. Just make sure you check it out, you know. Um, but that does it, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much for checking out these videos. Please share with me any feedback that you have, anything you want me to cover in the next videos, anything at all. I love hearing from you guys, questions, comments, compliments, concerns, anything of the nature. Throw it out there. Make sure you check me out at on Instagram at core.fx. Check out my YouTube page, all the other videos. I got all kinds of content on here. Um, but again, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Love you all. Have a great weekend. Anyone that celebrates Easter, have a great holiday. And I will catch up with all you guys this coming week.